Right, so my traditional slot where I attempt to squeeze far more content than I ought into 20 minutes before we have the, um, the peak excitement of the AGM coming up soon. So hold on to your hats for the uh, whistle stop tour. Um, I'll start my stopwatch so I actually can attempt to keep time. Um, thanks, Alison. Um, so yeah, the annual update from SuperX, this actually forms, um, it's sort of multi-purpose, it's to bring you up to date on um, everything that's been happening at SuperX within the last uh, year, but also it forms the um, officer's report, the uh, manager's report for the AGM, which is coming up shortly. So we we'll refer back to this talk when we get to the AGM. Big news, although this graph doesn't quite um, contain the uh, sort of represent the excitement we felt that we've had a really big upsurge in incoming data in the last 12 months uh the i'm trying to find my pointer actually um i can't find my pointer so uh the there's a sort of gentle slope rising up to 2022 in fact that probably was a flat line the the, the graph has sort of smoothed out the points a little bit but uh we've had a um, jump from just over 5 million records up to approaching 6 million records within the last 12 months um, thanks to um, uh, some reorganization and some new resources of uh, staff time that we've managed to put into uh, tackling some data flow backlogs. So thanks uh, every single one of you for submitting your records, um, continuing to build this amazing evidence base that we have. Oh, there's my pointer when I hold my mouse down. Um, this is the little uh, animated GIF that we put up every year, newly updated by Dave into our new QGIS software. Um, it just shows the density of records, uh, only covers the last 10 years, but it, or nine years, but it's, um, if you just sort of let it run through a couple of times, you can focus on your uh, area of interest and um, watch how the uh, number of records grows for each spot. And when you do focus on those early years, you can see quite a few blue squares and pale yellow squares, which were um, very few records or no records at all have been filled in and um getting some good record totals across the board. Of course, we'd love to turn um, the whole area uh, into very much darker tones so that we've got more solid evidence base for, for um, everything that we do with the data. Um, you can't move in Southeast Wales without encountering a protected and priority species record. Uh, this is just a sort of a quick demonstration of the density in some areas, uh, obviously in some of the upland areas, a little bit uh, under very agricultural areas, they're a little bit more sparse, but um, this is why the data is so important to be considered in, in decision making and really shows the value of how your records are used. Um, data, uh, I'm on the data input theme. Thank you to all of you who submit your records through whatever means uh, you use. Superrecord is still a very popular way of putting data in. Uh, as has been mentioned, you can now uh, use a data importer to get uh, larger quantities of data in from spreadsheets. Uh, we're now just over a quarter of a million records have been put in on Superrecord since since it started, and that's up by 31,000 since the last AGM, uh, which is a larger increase than the previous year. The Look Wells app is uh, also remaining very popular, uh, 41,765 records through that means, and over 10,000 in the last year. Um, I'm really never sure whether my sound is going to work. I'll sort of talk over it anyway, but this is the uh, traditional countdown of top 20 recorders. And if you can't hear the sound, I'm sorry. Hopefully, you'll be able to pick your names out. A few new entries in the top 20. And even in the top five. And guess who number one is? Yes, Barry Stewart. Well done, Barry. Well done to everybody if you feature in our top 20. I couldn't work out how to pause the music. I hope you heard it. Um, so the number of biological recorders we engage with, this is a, a relatively recent measure that we've uh, had for the last couple of years, but 1,184 separate recorders submitted records during 2022. Um, of those, a, a large number um, only submitted one record and uh, a very small number submitted 36% of the records. So we are um, we're appealing to sort of broad church recorders from very casual recorders to some very dedicated ones who submit uh, vast quantities of data. Um, but it's all um, about sort of encouraging more and more people to submit their records. Uh, more records and higher quality records is what we're about just to improve that um, ever growing evidence base. 
And we've had a major focus, as I mentioned already, on um, data flows, improving data, data flows. In 2021, um, we um, restructured to add one new full-time equivalent staff member to working on data flow issues. And then during 2022, we recruited two new staff who make up a further one full-time equivalent and their, their responsibilities include data mining. So we're hoping to uh, be able to prioritize establishing or refreshing previous data flows with local and national organizations promoting better recording data sharing practices and then streamlining data flows. Um, the times we're achieving now are pretty fast. We're, we're going um, in the region sort of two to three weeks from a record of arriving on the app or on Supercord uh, to making it onto a Darin, which is our main means of data output and uh, segueing nicely into the Adarin slot. Um, I'm not repeating a lot from previous years about Adarin because um, it's been up and running now for about five years as a public facing website where you can do things like find what's in my area, which uh, if you haven't played with it before, visit the Adarin homepage and just uh, tap in a grid reference or find where you are on a map or somewhere you're visiting on the map and uh, have a look and see what's already been recorded there. It's a great way of stimulating some new record submission. And then you can check national distribution maps. These are all these are both functions that anybody can use anywhere in the world without a, an Adarin uh, user account. We use Adarin to provide direct data access to a range of our customers. And during the current financial year, those are all the organizations who have direct Adarin access. When you consider five, six years ago that, that, that there were nobody had direct access, this is all getting much more efficient, getting more and more, more data into the hands of people who need it uh, more quickly than ever. Only one addition this year, the Kenfig Corporation Trust, or actually called Nature Corporation Limited, which is the, uh, the new uh, organization running Kenfig National Nature Reserve. Uh, commercial inquiries uh, have also reached record heights um, during the 2022-23 uh, financial year. Um, sorry, those are actually the wrong years, but this is the previous financial year on one year out with those data. Um, 943 commercial data searches, which was a new record up from the previous year's record of 827. So a heck of a lot of commercial data searches. Most of those relate to um, uh, development projects going on individual planning applications or schemes which require an ecological impact assessment. And our data is used to screen uh, planning applications uh, currently in as active use in nine out of our 12 local authorities, uh, eight of which we proactively search every planning application against our database. Um, some of you may be aware that the Welsh Government, um, the Minister of Biodiversity and Environment, uh, undertook a deep dive, biodiversity deep dive, came out with a series of recommendations and under this category one of recommendations was to explore the possibility of an all Wales contract to be set up with the local or I should say local environmental record centers to screen all planning applications this is our uh, stick to sort of um, prod things along and move things along so that all planning applications in Wales are checked against um, LERC data rather than the sort of 80 percent as it is at the moment so good news there and Adarin itself is undergoing a major code restructure, restructure behind the scenes. Our, our lead developer, John Robinson, is overseeing that work. And during 2023, there'll be a lot of work going on. A lot of it invisible because um, it's all about building the resilience of the system. Um, the changes will affect performance and reliability rather than adding any great new functionality to start with. Um, but there will be some um, work on the front end, the user interface, which will hopefully uh, you'll start to see visual improvements in the way Adarin works for you in the next 12 months. Moving on to look at our uh, some of our outreach work. Um, our field um, activities, our recorders days, um, bio blitzes and training days were still affected by the COVID-19 pandemic during 2022. We didn't get back to our full um, capacity for delivering attending events, um, but uh, we, we carried on delivering a lot of training via Zoom, but we did see resumption of a number of uh, outdoor events and indoor training courses. And obviously that will hopefully change dramatically during 2023 as we get back to hopefully more events than ever. Um, just a little pretty summary shot to remind you what summer looks like. Um, Whitford Burrows in June. For a walk led by Barry Stewart, the famous Barry Stewart of number one on the charts fame. Um, Big news this year, our new website, long, long uh, overdue, been in the pipeline for a very long time. Um, 
and it was great to finally get it out there. We, in the end, we developed it in-house. Um, Dave Slade did a huge amount of the work on getting the technical side done, and Elaine Wright um, oversaw all the huge overhaul of the content and the organisation of the content. Uh, if you haven't been to it before, it uh, really brings everything together. Previously, things were scattered across a daring website and uh, Superrecord, and um, now it's all coordinated. You can link to any of our sort of uh, websites and products and services via the menus on this website. Uh, just giving you a few snapshots of what's on there. The events calendar is really, really comprehensive and uh, very useful, hopefully. You can now search by event type or by area. You can filter the um, events. So you'll see this is just the next three days um, of events across our region. Um, again, Elaine coordinates getting the content of that kept up to date. Super recording grant I wanted to flag up. Uh, we've uh, had um, quite a lot of applica applications this year. We are definitely extending the um, grant scheme into the new financial year after, after April. We're a little undersubscribed this year, so if you go away from today, decide you want to apply, then uh, visit the website and find the page on the recording grant. Um, so yeah, it can fund um, all sorts of things, mainly recording equipment, um, identification guides, come out as the most popular as a little breakdown of the uh, grants given up to May 2022. So moth traps, microscopes, field equipment, trail cameras. So lots of sort of field based equipment, but also um, uh, there is the option of sort of purchasing books and going on training courses and other things as well. Uh, a couple of testimonials from our happy recipients of grants is Andrew Lucas with his lovely um, generator which has enabled him to go some uh, off-piste moth trapping and uh, Liam Old Colliery Spore Biodiversity Initiative um, thanking us for his um, reptile and uh, reptile survey equipment that he obtained through the biodiversity recorders grant scheme. We also have um, streamlined a book grant which uh, is up to I think it's up to 75 pounds just to purchase books a simpler form a simpler process but we also have added a loan scheme as well. So if you're not sure you want to take the plunge of asking for a moth trap or an expensive piece of recording kit, you can borrow from us in the first instance, uh, just get in touch. And again, everything's on the website. Uh, just again, a little pick of a few nice pages, the wildlife recording surveys. If, I, if this was a live view, it just scrolls down and down and down while you find all the different resources. This is just the wildlife recording surveys. It includes the YouTube playlists and channels that, uh, again, Elena's um, compiled and all these different resources, um, collections of videos you can see on YouTube to help um, meet your training needs. Some of them are subrec courses and some of them are just collated from other sources, but it is a fantastic resource. We've got our old uh, favourites, the Square of the Months are on the website. Um, uh, also, obviously, you can receive everything via our email distribution list um, and also the Species of the Month. Uh, brought right up to date there with the, um, well, not quite because we're in January, but uh, the Green Cellar Slug was the last one that was on the website. Just encouraging people to go out and record. Um, Under-recorded species, relatively easy to identify species. So uh, resources on here include, on the website include the uh, lists of local wildlife experts and how to contact them, the, effectively the county recorders for each of the counties we're covering. And the local wildlife groups, as you'll see, this is just the generalists and the birds that carries on down through um, to a whole range of different groups. So lots and lots of information on there. Of course, our um, newsletters, which I'm very proud of, always a um, nice, read hopefully you all subscribe to it and enjoy it these are the, the two editions from 2022 um and don't do wonder when we're going to run out of fantastic cover photos if, you, if you, we, we use um images from lots of our local photographers if you've got some lovely images do feel free to share them with us and you might make the uh, cover of the next edition but uh, they're always fantastic on the on the uh, visual front and just to point out, the uh, the website is also um, bilingual. Not not every page is, is fully bilingual, um, but the uh, the core pages are. And so feel free to browse and come right. Um, social media. I'm sure many of you follow us already. The growth is still um, incredible. Facebook's gone up by 400 uh, followers in in a year, and uh, 192 on Twitter, plus all these other um, channels that you can find us on. 
just a reminder also that we have our um, Subrec recorders group on um, on Facebook as well. It's a slightly separate to the uh, Subrec page. From now up to 523 members on there. And it's a great place to share your sightings and get help with ID tips. Uh, we use social media a lot to promote the work you do as our volunteer recorders. So um, we, we love flagging up things like new species to whales. Um, this is another, another Leah Moulds find, um, but also just the regular records of the week. It doesn't have to be a massively glamorous species, but this is the current record of the week. Tim Rich is a lovely photo of a, a very densely, um, a tree very dense with mistletoe in, in Thundaff. Projects this year, um, very thin on the ground. We, did, we finished a, a large project doing ecosystem resilience ma mapping for Swansea. We've done a pilot project already in the north of Swansea, but this was to complete the whole area, including the whole of Gower AOMB. Uh, interesting project. We're on the lookout for more projects for the, the following year. We didn't quite get the range of um, projects in that we normally do. Uh, obviously, they help with our income streams. So if you have anything in mind, if you have any uh, professional dealings with us, then, then come our way if you have any projects. So a quick touch look at the finances. Um, this is the spread of our income for the current financial year, or I should say projected income. Um, most of these are through service level agreements, which are all signed and sealed, but uh, the, the bottom one there, the other commercial income is the uh, commercial data sales, data searches um, um, to commercial customers, consultants, developers, etc. Uh, only two new arrivals on this. Um, for those of you who are resident in Cardiff, you'll be pleased to know that Cardiff Council signed an SLA for the first time. Uh, it has purchased some data from us before, um, but this was the first time they'd uh, signed up to a proper SLA. So we're searching planning applications in Cardiff for the first time now. And also Kenvig, I mentioned before, Ken Kenvig Nature Corporation Limited, uh, giving the new Kenvig Warden uh, live access to a daring. Um, our sales graph uh, for commercial data search sales um, is continuing to rise and recover after the sort of dips of the financial crisis. Um, a few good quarters this year, not, not booming, uh, but just ticking along really nicely at a very nice high level that we achieved in the last couple of years. And uh, sort of smoothed that even more with the annual performance since the start of Subrec. So um, definitely. On the rise, this is the three three quarters of the year in the sort of lighter shade. Apologies if that doesn't stand out very well. Uh, but yeah, it's a really, really useful source of income. And no matter how much public sector funding we can gather, uh, we, we still um, are pleased to see the amount of income we generate from the private sector. It's sort of, um, I say, we say it's the polluter pays principle. It's the people who are potentially doing the damage to biodiversity paying to support um, the, uh, our little piece of the conservation sector. Uh, people are absolutely critical to the running of Subrec. We wouldn't be where we are without um, all of you, really, all the recorders now and always. Um, please continue to record. I know it's sometimes uh, it can be a bit of a drudgery entering your records. We try and make it easy, as easy and supported as possible. Um, do try and embrace the technology because it makes life easier for everybody. Um, our customers and our funding partners, those that uh, contribute to those bars that we saw on the bar chart, um, please keep keep using us. Um, I hope we provide valuable service to, to those uh, organizations. Uh, directors, um, all of whom volunteer to, to uh, sit on the SUBREC boards, um, the majority are doing it in their spare time as well. So very, very grateful to, to all of those names you see there. So thank you to everybody, recorders, customers, and directors and finally I just wanted to thank the Subrec staff we're now uh, unbelievably when when we look back to the beginnings of the record centres in Wales only 22 years ago when I was the first employee of a record centre in Wales to have a, an individual regional record centre with 11 employees or run out as a contractor but 11 staff um, and, and John is shared uh, as the lead developer um, shared by Lurk Wales but uh, um, employed by Subrec, um, just great. And we haven't managed to get all 11 together. Uh, Renata is now uh, home working from Poland and that hasn't been a barrier at all. And she, but she's came and visited us on, on Thursday. Lots of us got together on Thursday. And um, some of the new staff, uh, particularly I want to highlight Emma, who many of you all know, who's attended many forums in the past. Um, 
and um, Becky Johnson, Becky Robinson, and uh, Rachel Shepherd Hunter are other two new recruits. Uh, these are the people who are working on um, providing our data inquiries, but also uh, Emma's majoring on events and outreach work, and um, Becky and Rachel are majoring on the data mining work. So hopefully, for a data provider, you'll have a contact with them over the coming. Uh, months and years so that's what we all look like we're all on the website is all just stolen from the uh, website not all of us look quite the same as we like to portray on the uh, website there we go um and then just as a sort of sad note to finish on since the last AGM we've, we've lost two giants of the wildlife recording in Gwent um many many of you will know and remember um fondly these two people Martin Anthony who was our uh super chairman for five years in um uh, one of our early earlier chairman who um who sadly lost in earlier in the year and then very recently um, I hope this is, um those of you who knew trevor hopefully will, will have heard this uh, but he passed away uh, 10 days ago um age 98 and trevor was the monmouthshire uh, plant recorder martin was the monmouthshire moth and butterfly recorder um both generated huge amounts of um records and um very willingly shared their knowledge and enthusiasm with the current generation of recorders. Um, that's us, that's us done. That's the um, contact details. You, you all know where we are and who we are. Or if you're new to the fold, if it's your first forum, then we'll welcome on board. Please do continue to stay in touch with us, subscribe to our newsletters, um, our mailing lists, and um, yeah, hopefully start submitting your records.